In this video, I'll show you how to use Active Campaign goals so that you can make a contact jump from one step in an automation to another step when they reach certain conditions. I'm Jason, growth specialist at Wildmail, where we help make Active Campaign even better for Europe based businesses. Let's dive in. So, first, before we start talking about how to use Active Campaign goals, we're going to talk about what goal actions actually are. And these help contexts move from one step in an automation to another step, skipping all the other steps in between uh, when they reach certain conditions that are set in the goal action. So if we look inside an automation, I can show you an example here. This is where you'll find the goal steps. It's yellow. And if I click into it, there are certain settings and I'll show you how to set this up in just a minute. Now, Two quick notes. First, contacts can only meet a goal once per entry in the automation. So that means if they reach the conditions, they jump to the goal, and then they reach the conditions again, they will not jump to the goal again. They can only meet it once. Uh, and the contacts have to be in the same automation with the goal in order to meet that goal condition. So even if they meet the conditions set in the goal settings, uh, and they're in a different automation, they're not going to magically jump into this other automation. They have to be within that automation that contains the goal reach the conditions in order to jump to the goal step okay and goals can provide a basic update of how your marketing automation is performing it's not the primary tool we use for reporting but it is one of the ways that you can do reporting inside active campaign now let's discuss when to use goals versus go to actions and i'll show you an example of a go to action here this is a go to action here it's orange and basically go to action is more sequential. It's when the contact needs to complete a step before the go to action step in order to jump from one specific step to another. Now, I know we're saying step a lot. Let me show you what I mean. In this one here, the contact subscribes to a main list and we're checking to see if they've already opened any other emails from our business. If they have, we're going to assume we've already welcomed them somewhere else, maybe when they downloaded a lead magnet or subscribed to a different list. So they go down the yes path. And then we're going to just direct them back into the main flow because there's no difference. We don't need to recreate this entire flow, uh, this drip sequence here. We don't need to recreate it for this yes path. We just need to skip the first welcome email because they've already received it and then bring them back into wait for one day and start the drip sequence uh, when they sign up to this main list here. So this would be one example, someone who's already signed up to a different list. They've already opted in. We've already welcomed them. Uh, and we don't want them to receive the same welcome email, we can send them through these conditions and then have a go to another action step so that we can send them back into the drip sequence. Now for goals, this is more for when you need the contact to be able to jump from anywhere in the automation to the goal step. Okay. It doesn't have to happen sequentially. They don't have to reach a step that says, uh, go to action. And then the following step will drag them to a new action anywhere that they are in the automation, they can be pulled down to that goal. And that's going to be determined by certain settings inside the goal, which we will go over right now. So the goal settings, we've got name, condition, location, trigger conversion, and action if conditions not met. Let's dive into our example here and I'll walk you through each one. So first, the name, this is going to be an internal name for your goal. It's not going to be seen by the contacts. So you typically want to name it uh, based on the outcome of that goal. In this case, we have has made a purchase. Uh, and then the second is jump to this action when the goal conditions are met. It's going to allow you to set the goal conditions. All right. These are the conditions for the contact to meet in order to get pulled down to this goal step. Next up we have and when this goal is this is the location setting. OK, you can set this so that it will only work when the goal is below the contacts position. So if the goal is located above, they cannot jump upwards and move to the goal when they meet the conditions. OK, if it's set to below contacts position, that means that this will only pull the contact to the goal step when that goal is below the contacts current position. If it's set to anywhere, this means that you can jump to a goal that is above the contact uh, in the automation. For example, we have these conditions here. If they've opened any email in the past, they'll go down this yes path here and receive an email sequence. If not, they'll go through this here. And as soon as they've clicked one of the links in this email sequence here, uh, they'll actually get pulled back up into this because we've got the goal set to anywhere. 
and then they would get this uh, email in the no path. Okay. The next setting that you might see is the trigger conversion setting. It's just for the attribution feature. Uh, we do not use this, but you can choose whether reaching a goal will trigger a conversion. And then finally, the action of conditions are not met. So this is for when the contact hits the goal, uh, but they don't meet the set conditions. You can set it to continue anyway, wait at that point until conditions are met or end the automation. And I'll show you that here. The contact does not meet the goal. They can continue and continue to progress down through the automation to the next step. Wait until the conditions are met. This will hold them in a queue at the goal step until they meet the conditions that are set up here. And finally, you can just choose to end the automation if they don't meet the condition in the goal settings at the time that they cross this goal. So now let's go over how to use the goal actions. I'm going to show you the most common way to use the goal settings in a sales drip sequence. So I'm going to go to this example here. First, you have to choose your trigger. So we're just going to choose when they subscribe to a main list. And here we're waiting until the conditions are met. Uh, 10 a.m. contacts time zone, and then we're going to send an email uh, number one. You can see this is an email drip sequence, okay? Sales email one, sales email two, sales email three, and the final sales email. You can find this sequence, this recipe, inside Active Campaign Recipes in the marketplace. At the end, you'll see this condition here does the contact match the following conditions? Uh, they've made a purchase for any e commerce integration. So we're checking to see, did they make a purchase after receiving these emails? If yes, we've got this goal here. We're going to add a tag customer. I'll show you the goal settings in just a second. If no, we're going to add a tag prospect didn't buy during the drip. Now, if we look at this note, if a contact makes a purchase, they'll actually jump down to this goal. They'll skip all the other messages in the pathway. This is great if you've got a drip sequence for selling a product. And as soon as someone buys, you don't want to continue sending them out, you know, potentially bothering them um, with emails, encouraging them to buy. They've already purchased. So we want them to skip all of the following emails and jump down to this goal step. So I'll show you how this is set up. The name that we've given it is has made a purchase. And now we're going to set the conditions by clicking into this here and using the segment builder. In this case, we're using an e-commerce integration. So we can choose has made a purchase based on any e-commerce integration. If you're using the Shopify deep data integration, you can choose that uh, and make sure to choose the specific integration that you have set up. Otherwise, another option would be tag exists and then just find the purchase tag. This is the tag that you're adding when they've made a purchase, when they've joined your membership, when they've joined your program, uh, whatever the case is. So for example, let's just say they've purchased the one-to-one -one coaching upsell, hit save. And now as soon as someone purchases that, adding that tag is handled by a separate automation, right? That's going to be handled by your sales automation or your integration with whatever platform uh, someone made the purchase on. I'm going to add that tag. As soon as that tag happens and they're in this sales sequence, and when the goal is below the contacts position, in this case, we want them to be pulled down to skip over the other emails. There's no scenario where they can be below this goal purchase and jump back up. So that's fine. We're setting it to below contacts position. And then if the contact does not meet the goal conditions continue anyways, that's fine in this scenario because there's no way that someone can reach this goal position without having made a purchase, right? We have the conditions here to prevent that. Uh, and the goal conditions prevent that as well. So we know they've made a purchase and we do want to add the tag customer after this. This is just a very basic example. Uh, and so this means that whenever purchase one-to-one -one coaching upsell is added, they're going through this sequence here, trying to get them to purchase the one-to-one -one upsell. As soon as they make that purchase, as soon as that tag is added, we're going to jump all of these other emails that are encouraging them to buy down to this goal add the tag customer and then end the automation. And then your next automation uh, would be triggered, whether that is a welcome sequence, um, an onboarding sequence, uh, depending on what they've purchased. So if you have any questions about the goal action step, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We'd be happy to help out.